I'm gonna get so much hate for this video. <laughs> Scam uh, means shame in English and it's a Norwegian uh, drama TV series which um, just uh, wrapped up its final season in 2017. Unfortunately it ended after only four seasons even though it became extremely popular. This was an internal decision which obviously wasn't very well received by fans but we understand. The scam was compared to uh, the British TV series Skins. It has a very similar format, even though scam um, kind of utilized this format even more by making each season about a specific um, character. Scam uh, gained a lot of popularity, a lot of momentum because it became an internet sensation. So unless you lived under a rock, uh, you should have probably seen a few videos here and there, a few articles. It's actually going to get an American remake. I'm shaking. I'm really afraid. I remember the American Skins remake. There are a lot of positive things in Scam. It was hailed for its representation of male gay characters and the struggles that come with coming out, especially during season three. It tackles a lot in terms of racism and so, um, just society expectations and cliche of uh, specific cultures or specific um, religions. So it really has a lot of positive things and all of these positive things have been said by everyone. What hasn't been said at all it's his problems because scam as any media um, has problems has flaws I'm talking about flaws which you may not pick up upon quite immediately until someone doesn't point it out to you there is actually a very interesting um, quote that I've read on the Justice League blog by Rachel after all most texts have some problematic elements in them because they're produced by humans who are well known to be imperfect. But it can be surprisingly difficult to own up to the problematic things in the media you like, particularly when you feel strongly about it, as many fans do. So if you are one of those people who just doesn't want to hear anything uh, negative about something that you like, then I suggest you end this video. If you're someone like me who enjoys scams a lot but feels like there are some problems with it or you know maybe you don't know there are problems with it and you are interested in knowing more then keep watching this video. I want to talk about Nora's character. She's one of the main characters and the way she changes everything that she is, let's just say her complete nature, um, since she started falling in love. I remember that uh, there were a few fans that picked up on some issues in the relationship, in the Nora and William relationship on Tumblr. Uh, however, I did not see anything at all about Nora uh, as a standalone character and why there were some issues with her character development, which obviously um, are going to feature with William as well. We are first introduced to Nora in the first episode of the first season. As I said, she's going to be one of the main characters, so we see her pretty early on. And as soon as we see her, we understand what she's about. If you have a statistic, you can see that the women who are called the other women have 90% higher chance to get chlamydia. Seriously? No. But it would be very cool if it was like that. Nora is um, introduced at a specific moment when um, Heva has a lot of issues uh, because of what happened in the past between her friends and her current boyfriend, which is Jonas. And it becomes really clear uh, right at the start that Jonas is actually a pretty bad boyfriend. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, Jonas actually uh, has a pretty good uh, character development later on and she, he becomes a sweetheart but at the beginning of season one he uh, you know himself his needs his friends are way more important than ever is and that's why Nora's introduction is so important because Nora is at that point in time the complete opposite of Eva she is the unattached um, uh, smart independent woman 
which Eva needs in order to understand that uh, she is more, she could be more than just um, Jonas girlfriend and that she doesn't necessarily have to put up with that stuff. I really think that Nora helps Eva understand a lot about herself. Actually, I think that Nora helps all the girls understand a lot about themselves. Sa han att det är er bra att Wilde ska fortælle Wilhelm att han inte kan behandla henne som dritt. Men hon kan inte gå och si säga ifrån han. Det kommer inte att funka. Det är er bättre bara att vara helt kul. Det går att vara kul och säga si ifrån. She often says to the other girls that they don't necessarily have to um, be with a popular guy, uh, just do what you feel like, you don't have to do something if you don't want to. This is specifically directed towards Bilde, which is instead portrayed as the shallow uh, and very materialistic kind of a girl. She, you know, try to make them understand that they need to feel their body, they need to feel what they like. and. While the other girls are very embarrassed about this kind of uh, dialogue, she's completely at ease with it, showing that she's a very comfortable woman. And that's wonderful, because that's really portrayed on television. What is it that you him? Tenner? What is it that you do? Caught. Caught. I don't caught. You don't ever get caught? No. Do you? Yeah. And while the other girls are pretty much obsessed with uh, gaining popularity and trying to date older guys, she literally doesn't give a fuck. Buss. Vet du hva? Vi skal lage verdens feteste russebuss. Har du lyst til å være med? Nei. We are introduced to William because Bilde is obsessed with him. And in episode 6, Nora recognizes that he is not the most trustworthy of guys. Because William is portrayed as the typical fuckboy, the typical um, guy who just can have any girl and does get any girl, which is, you know, it's pretty common, it's pretty cliche. Um, I was not interested in William whatsoever because I've seen that thousands of times in every movie or TV series, but you know, it's fine. I don't necessarily dislike William because he's a fuckboy. I mean, if I don't like to be in relationships and just um, have fun, that's totally fine. There's nothing shameful about it. The problem that goes with William's character and the way that he treats women is the fact that he uh, doesn't enjoy himself uh, within certain boundaries, within um, a respectful mind mindset. Maybe it's too true. Yeah, say, but I'm so much less trophies. So totally fine. Far too fine, okay. Just to give you an example, he gives out copies of his weta um, to all of the girls that he slept with. Um, and basically you have this high school with this parade of girls um, with uh, this weta with, um, that identifies them as girls that he slept with. I mean, that's fucking disturbing. In episode 7, we have a very famous uh, scene in which uh, Nora um, confronts William in front of everyone because of the way that he treated Bilde. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm really incredibly nervous about what can happen with you. It's like you have so much more and more complex than complex. It's like you're pissing on the feelings of a little unhappy first in the center to learn to feel big and Uansett hva det er, så må du seriøst komme deg over deg og begynne å oppføre deg som et menneske. Du slutter å gå rundt som en jævla klisje. Now, between um, episode 7 and 8 of the first season, we start to see how William is actually going to feel something towards Nora. Uh, and this plays a really common trope. It's the trope where you have the typical fuckboy, as I said before, who doesn't show affection for any of the women that he's been with um, until a certain girl 
comes along. For this trope, one of the girls um, that he comes uh, across with, for whatever reason, is immune to his charms. In fact, Nora is pretty much immune to his charms, at least at the beginning. Basically, this guy, the Casanova, starts to generally feel for her. And this is a pretty common uh, trope, uh, a staple of romantic comedy. In episode 11, which is the final one for the first season, we see the duality of the development of Nora's uh, character because on one side she is the same old Nora she tries to cheer up Bilde Bilde is clearly uh, starting to suffer from eating disorders um, and this is something that obviously comes from Bilde having a really low self-esteem but also it's, uh, it coincides with what William told her that Lilla, du är kämpefin. Bara inte fin nog. And to everyone saying, trying to justify this and saying, well, will they exaggerate this? Um, let me tell you something. Personally, yes. If a guy tells me you're not enough, you're not pretty enough, or you're not good enough, or I'm just gonna be like, Fuck, who the fuck do you think you are? I don't give a shit. But there are other girls which are very self-conscious about themselves. And Vilde is one of them. Vilde is really fragile. I know that when you think about it, if you're a girl and you don't like it, it's not you that you're wrong, but it's him. But how do you think about it? So this is particularly interesting because Nora um, sees the fact that um, someone as William has on other women and specifically this is one of her friends so um, by any means any woman specifically someone like Nora would it be interested in the slightest with someone like William. Throughout the beginning of the second season, we see William trying to get a date with Nora. And he does so in a very manipulative and controlling way. Basically by uh, apologizing to Vilde and what he said to Vilde in the previous season, if Nora agrees to go on a date with him. So, uh, Nora keeps saying no to him, she keeps saying that she doesn't want to go out with him and he keeps insisting. So, when a girl says no, it should be no, period. In the second episode, when she finally goes on a date with William, um, she is really cold towards him. She tells him that he's, um, she tells him everything that he's done wrong. She tells, uh, she tells him the reasons as to why he's been behaving badly. She tells him about uh, how he handled the situation with Vilde and then with her and the fact that basically he pushed her into the state even though she said no and that he's selfish and everything else and he starts making a whole um, dialogue in which he justifies himself It's so complicated to live in the living in the shell of my life I don't know why I'm not going to Når jeg ikke vil at hun skal være kjent på meg. Og det er bedre at jeg er tydelig mot henne. Og ikke lar det være. Det går ikke an å ødelegge selvbildet til noen ved en kommentar. I så fall så tror jeg det selvbildet var ødelagt fra før. Jeg synes jeg jo fra min side. Så var det hun som la han på meg. And by the end of it, Nora doesn't know how to respond to it. Because he kind of has a point. No, he doesn't. He still doesn't have a point. But the series wants to make you believe that it does. In any case, the person who has done something wrong has unexpectedly good reasons to justify the way he behaves. This is one of the main ways in which they prepared us for 
the beginning of William and Nora's relationship. And when you have this kind of background set for um, a relationship, you know it's going to have flaws, you know it's going to have problems. In episode 3, uh, she actually lies um, and she makes the conscious choice of remaining with him throughout the whole night. Um, and that is a conscious choice. She decides to pretend like she doesn't have a right to home anymore uh, in order to stay with him. It's totally understandable though. I mean, you can be attracted to someone who you actually don't like, but we always have a choice. We as people obviously feel really strongly about emotions, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be ruled by them. And I feel like someone like um, Nora would definitely understand that. That should have been her pretty much her clear uh, sequitur into um, the way that she feels, she starts to feel towards William. In episode five, they finally kiss. It's like, William has had enough. It's like, I justified myself. I gave you my motives. You couldn't find any counter um, on what I said. You had to agree that I'm not actually that bad. You actually are attracted to me. So, you know, let's move forward with this. The moment in which um, Nora decides to start this relationship with William, everything is about that. We, we literally don't have any more character development in Nora from that moment onwards. And some people may say, well, you know, even in season three, when we have um, Isaac and Evan uh, being together, uh, the, the season is pretty much about them as a couple. And uh, yes, that, that's absolutely true. But um, while the season is about them as a couple, both of them still manage to get um, a lot of individual growth. So she loses her edge, she um, starts to feel um, ashamed a little bit about her appearance and her sexuality. There is a scene in which she decides to take off her lipstick, which is like her signature makeup thing, yet um, she still make up with him. So it's not like she doesn't want to be sexually involved in a way or another with him. It's just, it's really odd. She starts to feel like she needs to tone it down a little bit. Okay, so the final straw is when she's actually raped by his brother, Nico. Uh, now, I understand William's reaction at the beginning because um, Basically, uh, Nico, William's brother, tells him that um, he, he had sex with Nora and uh, when he asks Nora if, that's, if that is true, she is obviously so confused that she doesn't respond immediately quite away and he automatically thinks the worst of it even though Nora has never given, given him uh, a reason to suspect that she is a girl that would betray him that way but I still understand why at the beginning you know as an emotional response he may have reacted that way but then we see Nora texting him and telling him that she was actually raped by Nico and William he doesn't hear her out he doesn't rush to her and try to comfort her and understand what is going on heck he doesn't even go to his brother and like smash his face out uh, that I would have understood more at this point she's completely it, it feels like her whole nature is completely nullified you know if something like this happened to Nora in season one um, she would have made a mess. She would have, despite her own confusion, she would have completely severed ties with someone like William who responded to what happened to her in that way. But not now. In season two she has become a completely different person. She is actually begging for him to understand her. You actually better see that? You? Du, du er jo forelsket i meg. 
don't want to go into much details about what happened later. Actually, it's quite boring. We only get to see uh, Nora coming back from London, being um, pining over William because um, the whole situation kind of got um, really weird for their relationship and uh, they broke up and then eventually in season 4, yay, they are reunited. So there's not much to say after that. I really just wanted to... Um, just kind of give a little bit of my own um, reading of Nora's character and her development throughout season one and two um, after she decides to be with William. The creator of the series has said in many interviews that she, her initial um, characters, her initial couple in mind for for starting scam was actually Nora and William. And the reason why she didn't put Nora in the first season uh, was because she wanted to give a little bit of um, momentum to her character. But to me, uh, all that happened feels so anachronistic. Like it's completely opposed to what you, sh what you showed us in season one and who she is in season one is completely opposed to how she deals with William and her own character in season two. And so I hope that even though you enjoy Scam and enjoy the relationship, you can still try to have a little bit of a critical eye and understand what I try to talk about today. Uh, let me know uh, if you agree with it or you don't agree with it. Let me know if something that I said helped you understand this better or if you think I got it completely wrong, it's fine. Um, the whole point of me making these videos is, well, first of all, talking with someone else about my obsessions, but also to um, like create a dialogue around certain issues and certain things which I watch. Uh, and since you know, we like to feel, all of us like to feel like we are so understandable and so politically correct when it comes to certain issues like sexism and racism and uh, homophobia but at the same time I feel like there are so many um, stratified um, behaviors and actions that we kind of um, that we have kind of learned to take for granted and we are kind of used to. Even if you keep enjoying that, that specific series or that specific movie, it's important to talk about, um, to kind of deconstruct these kind of things. Usually this is done, uh, I say it say like, I said this is a video, I say like, and I say that because this is usually done um, like in actual in college or you know uh, people who are actually scholars um i've done that during college um and that it has always been one of my favorite things to do so i'm trying to bring uh this sort of mindset which is traditionally heavier or um niche or like oriented it towards a specific audience. I'm trying to do that on a more enlarged base and I'm trying to do that with you guys just talking and not using, uh, you know, like crazy big words. Um, also because this is completely unscripted. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be. I had a lot of ideas but um, I'm still trying to figure out what what to do. That's why feed, the feedback that you guys give me is so important because that way I can understand if you if you like this sort of thing or if you like me to talk more about reviews. I may be failing. <laughs> Thank you for watching, you guys, and uh, please subscribe if you like this video and would like to hear more from me. And make sure to hit uh, the notification button. Bye.